If you do go on to enjoy today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button and of course subscribe. It really does help me out a lot. And if you want to avoid the random lottery that is FIFA points, you can go straight to the source with u7buy.com. And of course, you can use the code TVM at checkout to get yourself a discount. What is going on guys, TVM here. Welcome back to another video. I try this every year and every year we get a bit of hit or miss really, but we're going to do some confirmed and non-confirmed, so basically just rumours, uh, transfer talk for FIFA 20. Now, these cards will obviously be uh, be introduced periodically. They don't just do them straight away. So, for instance, we're still waiting for Haaland to be a Dortmund player. We're still waiting for Minamino to, to come out as a Liverpool player. And, and there's a, several others as well. Uh, but uh, we're going to go through a few of the players who could potentially be making moves in January and those who already have. So we might as well kick off with the uh, with the confirmed transfers then. There aren't that many worth um, worth shouting about, actually. The, the most recent ones are uh, Dabor from Sevilla to Hoffenheim. That was a reported fee of about 10 million, uh, which is interesting. He didn't really do anything at Sevilla. I don't know whether it was just a lack of first-team football. He didn't get on with someone in particular. I'm really not sure what the situation was there. However, uh, he has gone to Germany, so it remains to be seen uh, whether he'll be... Um, whether it'll be decent there or not. Some other confirmed transfers to mention then, of course, we already know about uh, Erling Haaland and we know about Minamino. They've gone to Liverpool and to Dortmund, of course. Julian Weigel has left Dortmund and he has gone to Benfica for a reported 18 million, which, um, I don't know, I think... In terms of, he's only 24, right? And he was getting fairly regular football at Dortmund. So it's a very strange transfer for me because obviously, like no disrespect to the Portuguese league, but the German league is held in such high regard compared to the Portuguese league. You'd think if you're playing for one of the better teams in Germany, you'd want to either stay there and fight for your place or maybe move to a... Um, not so great German side. So, for instance, go to one of the lower teams, be playing regular football, build up your profile in Germany, and then eventually maybe get a move back to Dortmund or to Bayern or Leipzig or something like that. But no, he's gone to Benfica. I mean, it's not a bad club to go to, is it? Let's be honest. But still, interesting one. No one else yet has made a uh, a tremendous, like, really, like, big signing. Um there's a couple of players around Europe moving here or there, but what we're going to do now is go over to what is called the rumor mill, essentially, and we're going to look at um, some transfers there. So Raul Jimenez is top of the tree here with a potential move to Manchester United. Now, Man United are literally linked to everybody. I mean, there is not one player out there that they've not been linked with. They've been linked with um, Chilwell, uh, left back. They've been linked with, of course, Raul Jimenez for around 40 to 50 million. In my opinion, if Manchester United or any other Premier League club want to buy a player of that calibre from another Premier League club, they will be play paying considerably over the odds because essentially Wolves and Manchester United are fighting for the same places. So there's no way Wolves are going to say, yes, I'll tell you what, we will sell you, a rival club, one of our players, for market value, because he's currently valued at around 40 million. He has to go for 60, 70, surely. Uh, Adama Traore being linked with a move away as well. I uh, don't know whether it's quite Manchester United being a front runner, but I've, I've seen it mentioned in quite a few places. I'll be very surprised if Adama Traore was to leave and join Manchester United. The problem with it is, and I'm not trying to throw shade at Man United in general here, but with the players being linked, and I'll throw a few more on screen right now, with the players currently being linked to Man United, and there are a lot of them, most of them either play for teams that are currently higher than Man United in the league and playing much better. So there are quite a few Leicester players being linked with moves to Manchester United. I know Harry Maguire moved in the summer, but at that point, Man United weren't quite, um, in my opinion at least, worse than Leicester. They were maybe on the same level, but Leicester have just come on leaps and bounds this season. They are second in the league. They are proving that they are not quite title contenders, maybe, but at the same time, yeah, they kind of are. Manchester United are not, not even in the slightest. They are going to be struggling to, to battle for, for the Champions League and for, obviously, in and around that European uh, place, which 
Leicester are head and shoulders above right now. So why would a Leicester player be who is currently in the first team be willing to move to Man United, a side that, okay, they, they're steeped in history and they've got this massive uh, presence, if you will, but they're not the team they used to be right now. So why would you move from a team who is currently in the Champions League spots, challenging the likes of Liverpool and Manchester City, to drop down to a team at the moment like Man United who will be challenging for Europa League places. It doesn't really make an awful lot of sense to me, unless, unless, of course, Man United are willing to quite literally throw money at the problem and try and attract a player like Chilwell for ridiculous amounts of money compared to what Leicester can pay. Moving on to a team that we just mentioned, of course, Liverpool. Nathaniel Klein could potentially be moving a permanent move as well. And that wouldn't surprise me in the slightest because he's not been anywhere near the Liverpool first team for a number of years now. Why he's still there is beyond me. Could be moving to West Ham. I would imagine either as his contract runs down, he could go there on a free or he would go for as little as 5 to 10 million, which... A few seasons ago was still a substantial fee, but obviously now is is not an awful lot. Let's go to the bottom half of the Premier League, and we'll talk about Aston Villa and a potential move for a new striker there. Of course, they signed Wesley in the summer. That was a big signing, and a player that turned heads really because I mean that's a that's a big player. He's not really hit the ground running, uh, but Aston Villa could look to do it again here with Piantech of AC Milan. Now, in my opinion. I don't know if I trust that move in terms of Villa. I, he's a good player, don't get me wrong. But I think what they need is a Premier League proven striker. Uh, I'm not saying go after Daniel Sturridge or anything, but I, I think he's a, he's a good player. I like him a lot. However, I think a team like Aston Villa needs someone who they know is going to be able to score goals in the Premier League. And that kind of brings me on to another player that they've been rumoured to pick up. I'm, I don't know how much weight this really holds, but it is... Is something that's popped up. Olivier Giroud. Now, he's actually been linked with, you'll never guess, Manchester United as well. But I, I don't know. Is he really going to try and make his way around the, the top Premier League teams? You know, Arsenal, Chelsea, and then Manchester United. And, of course, maybe pop off to, to Man City as a sub in, in the next few years. But, no, Aston Villa linked with him. Remains to be seen how much truth there is in that, of course. Andreas Christensen linked with a move to Milan. Uh, AC Milan, that is, of course. Now, I don't know how often he's featured for for Chelsea this season, so that could actually be a, a move that we see happen. And now that Chelsea don't have that transfer um, embargo over them, there is a potential for some movement out as well as a lot of movement in. I'm seeing quite a lot of players linked with Chelsea. And again, I'll throw some of them on screen for you right now because I don't actually have them to hand. Uh, but it would be very interesting to see if um, if Chelsea do go mad, uh, I, I don't know. I've got a funny feeling Frank Lampard will rein in a little bit. He's an experienced hand in terms of football, not management, but in football terms. He knows what uh, bringing in a lot of people into the club at the one time can do. He's obviously been a Chelsea player for, for many, many years, so he knows this better than anybody. If you bring in a lot of players at once, it could disrupt the fabric of the side. And Chelsea, albeit slightly ropey here or there against certain teams in certain games, for the most part at least, they are a very solid side. Moving on to two Premier League clubs, probably more actually, but uh, these two are the front runners interested in a Portuguese league centre mid. Now, I am of course talking about Gedson Fernandes and the two clubs in question are Everton and West Ham United. Interestingly enough, Julian Weigel, as we mentioned earlier, has just moved to Benfica. That does kind of open the door for Gedson Fernandes to leave. It's a strange one because he's very, very young. You'd think he'd want to get a couple more seasons under his belt there at Benfica, really boost that confidence and then make that big money move. But he could be willing to make that move a lot sooner than many thought. Um, he's currently only valued at around 13 million. So, I mean, I don't think he'll move for that. He'll probably be moving closer to the sort of 30, 40 million mark. But um, his market value is only around 13 million. So it'll be interesting to see. A, which club he goes to, and B, how much he actually moves for. I don't know which club would benefit from his services more, really, West Ham or Everton. Um, he's not exactly a, a proven player, so which club could afford to take the risk more is the question. I think he'd be maybe better under the likes of uh, Ancelotti, but we'll have to wait and see what happens there. 
Danny Olmo, we all know this guy from FIFA, of course. He could maybe, quite possibly, probably not, but you never know, going to Barcelona. Wouldn't be surprised to see him move there and get loaned back for the season. However, uh, he is currently valued at around 31 million, so that is a lot of money. But that's just the market value, so he's probably likely to go closer to the 80 to 90 million mark. And it's just crazy the amount of money thrown around for unproven kids these days, but uh, Danny Olmo definitely... Um, in contention of a move, and Barcelona are indeed the front runners. Another player, in fact, another few players who could potentially be making moves. Uh, we've got Paco Alcacer of uh, Dortmund. He could be on his way back to Spain with Atletico Madrid. I feel like Atletico really do need that out-and-out -out goal scorer that they've been lacking for so many seasons, because even though uh, João Felix is there, he's not exactly smashing in the goals. The uh, Diego Costa is another one of those players you just don't see scoring tons and tons of goals. So they do need uh, a Paco Alcathea kind of player who can score a lot of goals. Um, he, I, I would imagine, wouldn't be that expensive either, to be fair. Thomas Lamar uh, could be one of the players going, not the opposite direction necessarily, but leaving Atletico. And he could be on his way to France. Of course, he is French, so he could be going home, going to Lyon. I'm not sure if he like, started his career at Lyon or he is a Lyon youth player or anything like that, but um, he could be going back to France. Now, it would be interesting to see the amount of money that they would actually want for him. He's currently valued at around 27 million, and I think that would be around fair, I think, that amount of money, an interesting one. For sure. He was linked with Arsenal and has been linked with Arsenal for so many seasons, but I genuinely don't see that happening. A um, few other uh, deals potentially. Ferran, 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 Ferran Torres uh, of Valencia could be on his way to Real Madrid. I wouldn't be surprised by that, actually, because Real Madrid are going to need to spend a bit of money. There are a few players there that you could potentially see move elsewhere. Gareth Bale being one of them, although that's been in the rumour mill for like two seasons now. So. I think he might just let his contract run down and then eventually take a free back to the Premier League um, with whomever it may be. Again, you wouldn't believe it, but Manchester United are linked with him, but we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Uh, another Valencia player potentially on the move, and interestingly enough, to Leon as well, is Kevin Gamero. Of course, he is French, so he could be moving back to, again, his, um, his, uh, his nation of birth. Uh, still a good player, Kevin Gamero. I like him. And of course... The Spanish league may be a little bit more competitive than the French league, so he could actually do well if moving back to France. There are quite a few other players in contention. A lot of youth players with uh, Barcelona. Um, Todibo could be moving to AC Milan. Interesting move for him. Uh, I think he's a... Is he a bronze in FIFA or maybe now a silver? He was a bronze last year. I'm not quite sure what he is this year. Um, a few other players worth mentioning then. Emre Chan, I saw this and I think I may have shown you earlier. Emre Chan to uh, Fiorentina is a no-go, but Emre Chan to Manchester United is something that I saw. It had a little bit of traction to it as well. I mean, dear oh dear, I don't rate Emre Chan really. He he moved to Juve from Liverpool, and I'm a Liverpool fan. I'm not a fan, so I'm not salty about him leaving. I'm actually really glad he left. At the time, I was like, oh, it's a shame he's gone because I, I do, um, I, you know, he's, he's got potential. But since going to Juve, he's had a couple of chances and he just hasn't done anything of note, really, has he? So moving back to the Premier League for him, I'm not sure if that's a, a good option or not. Maybe if I was him, I'd probably go to um, go to Germany. Maybe, you know, there's an empty slot in Dortmund. Weigel's just gone. Why not go over there and, uh, and, and try your luck? I'm not sure. That's going to do it. For this confirmed and rumour mill transfer video for FIFA 20. If you have enjoyed it and you want to see more. Then do me a favour and hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until the next time. Goodbye. Football Index. The game changed. Download the app now.